Welcome back everybody. This week we're going to do a sling tech tip video. It's going to be more of an informational video, but it's going to be in regard to the countersunk rivets uh, found on the TSI and we're going to kind of zone in on the fuel tank because there's uh, some areas of concern uh, that I see people struggle with and I just want to kind of give them some information on it. And it's going to be in regards to the actual sealed rivets of the fuel tank here. Um, as you know, there's two different types of rivets found on the TSI tank. There's sealed rivets and there's regular countersunk 3-2 uh, uh, rivets. And the issue is normally found on the sealed rivets of the tank. So the first way to achieve a good countersunk rivet um, on any metal is to make sure that your dimple is uh, very defined and it's all the way into the metal so that way it allows the countersunk rivet to be flush with the surface. And in order to achieve that is going to be how you use your tool and then also your countersunk uh, dies themselves. You want to make sure that the dies are always clean and polished and that there's no greater debris inside the hole so that way the mating surfaces are always 100% uh, contact with each other. Uh, and then the second part of the rivet uh, dimpling is going to be using the tool. Um, just because the dimple dies touch each other doesn't mean that's going to give you a good uh, dimple. You want to make sure that you actually touch the two surfaces and then you actually go about 10% more than that and you have a good positive uh, feel on your tool because what it does is that actually bends the metal uh, more and allows that countersunk to be very defined. And We've um, done a couple test holes that I'll show you in detailed pictures that show uh, a very defined countersunk dimple and also a one where it just touches the mating surfaces and that was it. So these ones are, are no good and I'll show you detailed pictures of that. So that's the first portion of everything. The second portion is basically down to your rivet gun that you use. Uh, more, more so the actual mandrel on the rivet gun. So as you know, um, the countersunk rivet has a, a head diameter and you want to make sure that you take that head diameter and it matches the diameter of the mandrel on the rivet because if the mandrel is larger, it's gonna sit and it's gonna um, overshadow the rivet uh, dimple hole and it's gonna pull the rivet head out of the hole and it'll act as, it'll, it'll, it'll be like a, a button, head, <clears throat> button head rivet. So the actual rivet's gonna look like button heads and that's more, more so found on the, the sealed rivet. So guys that have already done this before or guys that are going to, You'll notice that the normal standard 3-2 countersunk rivets all pull pretty pretty good. These are the ones that are not found inside the tank. They're the non-sealing ones. But when it comes to the sealed rivets, these, when you pull them, you might notice that they actually start to look like buttonhead, buttonhead rivets. And the reason why it does that is because, one, you don't have a defined hole, so the rivet doesn't go all the way in the hole that it needs to, into the um, dimple or the mandrel is not right and the mandrel is actually larger than the dimple OD and it takes and it sits over that hole and it pulls that rivet out of the hole and then when it breaks the rivet it actually acts as a, a button head rivet so it gives the appearance that it's a button head when really it's a countersunk rivet. So you just want to make sure and I'll show you detailed pictures this is the Milwaukee tool that we use and we want to make sure and, and these mandrels work really well. The mandrel diameter matches the OD of the countersunk rivet. So if that doesn't match, you're going to get the appearance, or you can get the appearance that it's going to be a button head rivet. So to achieve flush, uh, beautiful countersunk rivets on any portion of the T-side, but most commonly on these sealed rivets, you want to make sure that your rivet gun is adequate and that your um, holes are adequate. So hopefully this helps you guys.